This is not a sight you want to see if you're a Georgia Tech fan in a game that's still very much in doubt as the fourth quarter is about to begin. Josh Nesbitt heading to the locker room. And Stacey Dales, I know you were right on top of it down there. Yes, Brad, absolutely. It's the right foot. And they took the tape off. They put the tape back on. And he did a couple of strolls up and down the sideline. He shook his head as if, no, I can't go. They told me he was doubtful. But as you guys saw, he's gone to the locker room for further examination. And I don't suspect he'll be back in this game, Brad. That puts a lot of pressure on Jabo Shaw, the freshman quarterback. Georgia Tech's going to try to add some points. Scott Blair has lined up. And meanwhile, timeout taken by Florida State, and it'll get us a chance to get an update from New York. Well, Brad, thanks a lot. Sports Center right now, powered by Vizio. Tim Tebow having a terrific game, already has two touchdown runs, and this a 44-yard pass to Lewis Murphy as Florida is starting to put away the Georgia Bulldogs. 28-3 to score right now with about 4.30 to go in the third quarter. Yeah, he's in the game. Well, that's why he called timeout. Bobby Bowden on the Florida State sideline, having taken a timeout as Georgia Tech had lined up for a long field goal attempt. You got to wonder if this is going to be a quick kick or they also, if they're going to try a field goal from this also, far out. They also had Booker in the ballgame, which was a third string quarterback. Well, Scott Blair's career long is 39 yards. They're asking a whole bunch of them here. Now, if he should hit this, how big would that be? Or because maybe. Georgia Tech's quarterback is out of the game. Scott Blair from 54, yep. and it is a pooch punt to the far side, and he did it beautifully. Yes, he did. Florida State does not have anybody back just in case of something like that. It was, a, it was in the prime area for a gimmick. A, 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 a snap to the kicker and punt it, or a play action gimmick or something like that. Good play. ABC Thursday, all new life on Mars. The next great cop shows arrived. It'll follow an all new Grey's Anatomy. Thursday at 10, 9 central on ABC. Well, you can't do it any better than that. Scott Blair, who not only punts, plays kicks, kicks off, and just quick kicked or pooch punted down to the one yard line. And now it's going to get noisy for Christian Ponder and company on that end of the field. Student body left. Ponder in trouble. Hit as he throws by Brad Jefferson. You can't hold on to that ball that long down there in the end zone, Grease. I mean, if you're going to do this and just stand back there and, and hold on to the football and wait for your guy to clear, look how long Ponder's standing there. You don't have that much time, son. Actually, Jefferson was covering the back, but when he saw the back was blocking, then he was a free blitzer. That's a nice spot for a quarterback, huh, Grease, right there? Oh, yeah, we love that, <laughs> especially when you get all the noise. That run didn't go anywhere. Vance Walker and the rest of the front wall collapses, and it's going to be third down and long. Fourth quarter here in Atlanta, Georgia Tech. Trying to go to 7-2 and two and put themselves back in the hunt for the ACC championship. Florida State needs to come from behind to have a chance to hold their spot atop the Atlantic. And with a third down and long coming up and a long winning streak against Georgia Tech, third and eight. The thing I like down there, Brad, especially on first down, is roll out to the wide side of the field where you don't have to worry about the pass rush. Ponder will take the snap in his own end zone. In trouble. Trying to find a way to get away and got it. What a throw. Big play. And catch out to Rod Owens. Big play. Instead of punting from the back of your end zone, Florida State now gets another set of downs and an opportunity to move down the field and if not score points, at least get field position. And give Ponder credit for not only rolling away, but the offensive line didn't hold in the end zone or that would have been a well, safe. that's a good point. And that's what I said right there. Roll him out where the defensive backs have to cover their men for a lot more than three or four seconds. 
On third and eight, they got 11. First down, Seminoles. Smith trying to take it to the wide side, and Morgan Burnett just stood him up. <laughs> Boy, that kid's a football player, isn't he? Well, the, you know, the thing about Morgan Burnett is, he, as we said earlier, he's a leading tackler on this football team. He's got six interceptions. But the thing about him is he's got great field position and closing speed. He saw the sweep coming. He got himself in a football position to make the tackle. I mean, this kid is really good. No gain on the play, so second down and 10. That secondary of Georgia Tech. They're missing two of their starters. Ward Daniels and Reese are not in there. Five wideouts for Ponder. And still a lot of noise down on that end of the field. Going to throw the outs. Oh. Breaking away, but then getting broken up is Taiwan Easterling. That was Mario Butler, number two, to end the first lick on. I'll tell you. Morgan Burnett. His brother, Cap, was a star for the Georgia Bulldogs, of all things. So it's a split family, as they call it down here. Well, those are just some of the hits he's made today, including this one on Smith a moment ago. And he is a player. Third down and long again for the Knowles. Can Christian Ponder pull one out of his back pocket as he did the last time they had third and eight? Timeout taken. They were running out of time. There was no more time to ponder. It was time to snap it. 11.58 to go in Atlanta. <laughs> Georgia Tech's got anybody that even said, Coach, I played some DB in high school in there right now on this third down and eight. So three, two, six defensive backs. Ponder hit as he throws, and Parker made the catch. That's the second time on third and eight. Christian Ponder's delivered. Flags down. An all-important call right here. Holding against the Seminoles. Oh, man, oh, man. I just, first of all, I couldn't believe that Ponder got this ball off. Tony Clark let him have it. Penalty takes the ball half the distance to the goal line. Repeat third down. What did he say, 77? That's it, Sanders. Hey, look over here. I think he said 77. Yeah, that's, oh, yeah. That's no pretty question. much holding. Yeah. He calls it right here, too. Now it's third down and a mile for Ponder. That's a freshman. Offensive tackle making a big mistake. Potter at his own goal line. Loads and goes down the middle, and Burnett almost had it. Incomplete. Second time or third time today he's had his hands on a football. If Jackson hadn't hit it, it's friendly fire. <laughs> his own man hitting. Or else he would have had that one. Oh, man, I tell you what, it was really true. Morgan Burnett had read it perfectly, read the quarterback size, and his own man knocks him off the ball. And now it's going to be a tough spot for Graham Gano. He's almost at his own end line right now to punt. High kick. Roddy Jones, fair catch. 46-yard line. Great kick. 46-yarder and a lot of hang time. Yeah. This defense for Georgia Tech has been good almost all day long. Morgan Burnett's been sensational all day long. You're watching ESPN College Football on ABC, presented by Best Buy. ESPN College Football on ABC, brought to you by Best Buy, you happier. Powered by Pontiac, official performance machines of the NCAA. And Allstate, proud sponsors of college football. Are you in good hands? Frank Gordy founded the varsity in 1928. It's been an institution ever since. Originally called the Yellow Jacket. We walked some dogs yesterday and had an F.O. <laughs> an F.O. 
frosty orange. There you go. You had a little bit of it, didn't you? I, it was good. I, they didn't get any strings. I wanted a bag of strings. Those would be French fries. And a PC. I wanted a PC yesterday. That's a plain chocolate. And they give you a cup of ice with the plain chocolate if you like your milk a little and, bit colder. And, and a yellow dog is a mustard. Yeah, that's with what? Mustard and, and red, red dog. Ketchup. Are you trying to get some free food? <laughs> what didn't cost us anything yesterday, did it? Or did you buy? I, buy. <laughs> I thought what of you did. He I wasn't there. Sure. It didn't cost him anyway. You know, some of us have free, free things other places. Now we got a great ball game today too. Georgia Tech in front. Jabo Shaw, the freshman, pitches to Jonathan Dwyer. Dwyer trying to get the corner. It's going to be run out in front of the Florida State bench after a pickup of just a couple. Now, obviously, time is of the essence for Florida State as well because they're two scores down with 10.38 to play. Paul Johnson going into his bag of tricks. His starting quarterback is out. He has his freshman backup quarterback, j -Bo Shaw, in the ballgame. He has run some plays with him earlier that didn't do anything at all, so he's trying to get him outside, run something where he can either run himself around the end or pitch it on the option. The last time Georgia Tech threw a pass, there was five minutes left in the second quarter. We've got ten minutes left in the ballgame. Well, they might have been thinking about passing there, but timeout taken by Georgia Tech. And Paul Johnson will get in the faces of his players. That's been something that everybody has noticed in this city is his sideline can get a little fiery, and he is ripping everybody. You like to see that. Right now. I like to see that. They took so long to get the play going. Well, and they're not running the plays the right way that he wants them run. Well, he ran, it looks like when he walked out of the field, now he's at midfield. And he walked up to the offensive lineman and got in their face. Well, he got in Jabo Shaw's first, and then he worked his way around the huddle. <laughs> this, this is the youngest. This is the youngest team in the ACC. 75 players are either freshmen or sophomores. They had a great recruiting class last year, and there's Bobby going down and trying to fire up his guys. So both coaches are coaching, and one with a lot of emotion with a headset on. On the Georgia Tech sideline, and as Paul said, they're almost to the middle of the field before they're going to come back. That was Calvin Booker, number 18, you saw. That's always an option as well. The senior who's probably the best thrower of any yeah. of the Georgia yeah, Tech he's quarterbacks. He's not much of a runner. He's more of a drop-back thrower. Well, let's see whatever Paul Johnson dialed up if it works. On third down and a long six. Shaw. Trying to cut back in the middle, and he's not even going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe he did, but no gain anyway. The only thing they're going to gain here is using some clock before they punt. So we take a look at our ESPNU All-State Standings Review. Texas and Texas Tech both undefeated. They get together in Lubbock tonight on ABC. Alabama beat Arkansas State. Penn State has the week off. We'll see them at Iowa next week. And Oklahoma and Nebraska on ESPN tonight. You go down the list, Georgia's going to fall. It appears as Florida has been putting it on the dogs today down at Jacksonville. Getting a little revenge from last year, you think? Yeah, I guess so. The last time Scott Blair punted, he put it down to the one-yard line. He'd love to do that again. Burt Reed's going to return this one, though, from the 17. Reed weaving his way, ran into his own man, or he might have had a bigger return out of it. Got about 13 on the return after the 30-yard line. Very important series on offense for Florida State is coming up. Part of the Georgia Tech offense there on the sideline, including the freshman quarterback, Jamo Shaw, with a headset on. Meanwhile, it's Florida State's turn offensively, and they need to score. Ponder. Deep out, too high, intended for Preston Parker. Remember the last time Florida State had the ball? They kicked from their own. They punted, and then Georgia Tech couldn't do anything and punted back to them. Look where they've got the ball now. They've got it on the what? The 30-yard line yep. instead of back on the 5 or 10-yard line. So they gained about 25 yards in the exchange of punts. Those are some of those hidden yards. Derek Morgan coming off favoring something. Robert Hall is going to take his place. Greg Carr has been shut out this half at wide receiver for Florida State. They threw a lot of slants to him earlier in the ballgame. Now they're going over the middle, and it's complete. I don't know that he got a first down, Taiwan Easterling, but he's awfully close. 
Our Dr. Pepper ACC update today. Miami in overtime beat Virginia, which did Georgia Tech a huge favor. Wake Forest leading Duke in the fourth. Likewise, Clemson leading Boston College in the fourth quarter in a topsy-turvy 2008 oh, in the oh, ACC. Boy. Big win for Miami. Huge win for Miami. And now they're in the hunt. They're three and two in their division. Georgia Tech trying to climb back up in there with Virginia having lost. They can do so if they beat Florida State here. Here's a big opening for Thomas. He's been a thorn in the side of the Georgia Tech defense. Flags down on the play as Thomas might have a first down negated if it's a holding call. Usually the players know, and Georgia Tech is not moving back up to the old line of scrimmage. 97 yeah. defense, that penalty is declined. First down. When you know it's the guy that came in to take Derek Morgan's spot, Robert Hall, the sophomore. And there's Morgan on the sideline. Trying to work something out. I don't know if it's his right shoulder or his elbow, but he came off kind of having that arm dragging a little bit. Yeah, but his legs are still moving pretty good. Get yeah. him back out there. <laughs> First down for the Knowles at their own 48-yard line. Eight minutes left. Ponder. Throws complete. And that is Greg Carr, who hadn't had a catch until that one here in this half. Well, the chase for the NASCAR Sprint Cup continues with the Dixie 500 in Texas on ABC tomorrow. Coverage starts with NASCAR countdown at 3 o'clock Eastern time. Jimmy Johnson trying to wrap things up. What are they going, going to Texas and then Phoenix? Going to Texas. And then Homestead. <laughs> and then they're going to crown the Jim, champion. I think Jimmy can put it in neutral, can he? Yeah, I don't know. I think he can. Potter gives off to Thomas, and Thomas got only about a yard. Tripped up. And it's going to bring up third down. What I don't understand is, you know, the, the Florida State, they only have one timeout left. The, the clock's going inside seven minutes. They're down 11 points. They're just walking around, Reese. They're not like they're... they're they need to hurry up and get some things done. You're right, They're Paul. 11 points down. There's no urgency right yeah. now, and they look confused as well, and I think they're going to bring out Devontae Richardson into the huddle in a hurry. Jimbo Fisher's looking up there going. By the time he got Ponder off the field, they're going to have to hustle up to the line. Yeah, you're telling the other team we're going to run the ball when you bring... And probably to the left. Richardson. And Georgia Tech took a timeout. So Georgia Tech's only got one timeout left, and we're down to 6.45 to play. If you can count quickly from the blimp, that's 12 guys in white. That's too many. And that's why Tech took a timeout. Otherwise, they'd have been penalized, and it would have been a free first down yeah. for Florida State. You hate to use that timeout, but you don't want to give them a free first down right here. Third down and three. Here comes a blitz. Richardson going to throw back. And he overshot his receiver. Well, that's the first time they've let him put it in the air. And now it's fourth down. And that was good coverage by Clark, the linebacker. Now what do you do? Well, you pretty much got to go, don't you? You got to go for it. Too long for a field goal, even though Gano has made, what, four 50-yard field goals in the last four games? Yep. Ponder's back. Florida State has only tried on fourth down once. Uh, four times this year, they've converted one. They need to get to the Georgia Tech 42-yard line. Ponder back in there. This might be the ball game. Quick throw and catch first down. Down to the 39-yard line to Burt Reed. It tells you something. Who does Ponder go to when you need to pick up the first down? The little guy, Reed. Speaking of Reed, Rashad Reed is the injured Yellow Jacket. It was Reed on Reed. Yeah, well, that was friendly fire. He had he got hit by a linebacker because Reed ducked. <laughs> our great aerial shots today, courtesy of our friends at Outback Steakhouse, proud sponsor of the Outback Bowl. Bloomin' Onion One Airship, fan favorite at all our ABC and ESPN College football games. Thanks for the great shots from a crystal clear blue sky over Atlanta this first day oh, of November. Boy. Another defensive back. They're out of guys. Yeah. The 28 we're looking for. Oh, right there. You're See, right. The other read that caught the ball, the Florida State read, 
got down. He's only 5'11", 165. It's a good thing he got down. Cedric Griffin, Griffin. Griffin. Yeah, the is the guy. Eighth play of the Florida State drive. Richardson back in there at quarterback from the 39. He drops back, and he wants to throw, and he's got a man open. Caught. Touchdown. Preston Parker, a 39-yard strike from Devontae Richardson. They might want to let him throw a little bit more when he's in there. But when he comes in, Brad, the defense says, Pan, run, 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 all the way. Now, straight down is a great throw. Parker sees it all the way and makes a play. The freshman, Taylor, can't make the play this time. Touchdown, Seminole. And now the Seminoles are going to go for two to try to make it a field goal ball game with 6.04 remaining. They work on these plays every day, all week. You've got about three or four two-point two plays in your packet. Jermaine Thomas will flank Ponder in the shotgun for two. The fade to the corner. Georgia Tech is going to be penalized. Trying to loft it over there to Carr. And out there covering on the outside is Cedric Griffin, who is number 54, is a linebacker. Pass interference, number two of the defense. That penalty is declined. The try is successful. Well, that was Butler, but again, out there was Griffin. Here's... You got 6'6", six, six going up against 6 foot. So you got six inches. Oh, just, how does he make that Just hit? jumps up with long arms and makes the play. And that's why they're doing this. You wonder why they're doing this, one of these things, because what Carr can do right there. He's got two guys around him. He jumps up, makes the catch. Well, he knows how to use that 6'6 height. It's just the advantage as far as being able to you use your height to attack the ball a lot sooner, and at the same time, you, you can also use your height to kind of shield off defenders because I, being a basketball player, that I form a basketball player, you kind of use that. The only wide out in Florida State history to match his height was Ouija Thompson. Ouija Thompson was likewise, like Greg Carr, 6'6", but this is what 6'6 can do to you. Wow. That, that, was, that was a tough catch. He had to fight off the defensive back, stay away from the linebacker that was coming out there. The game is down to a field goal, 6.04 remaining, and Georgia Tech starting quarterback in the locker room. It's going to be a pressure-packed series for Jabo Shaw after Georgia Tech gets this kickoff. Marcus Wright from about the two. Spins his way out close to the 25. Let's check it. The Florida State fans who made the trip from Tallahassee getting noisy now. Georgia Tech trying to cling to a three-point lead. Jabo Shaw to throw, and he's going deep for Thomas. And it's intercepted by Patrick Robinson. outstanding coverage but the ball is thrown short right, you're right Paul I mean this is the first pass of the day you got your big receiver out there on a little guy now you want to throw the ball up high into the outside not low and inside that's the only place your guy can catch it you got a 6 6 230 pound guy throw it high and outside where he can use his body to, to shield the uh, defensive back from the ball. You don't want to turn your back on Georgia Tech yet. <laughs> Here comes Florida State again. And it's Thomas out to the 47-yard line. Now, and that's just to go back on one other thing with Georgia Tech. Since Nesbitt went out, the starting quarterback, they have gained a total of 11 yards. Well, remember what Bobby Bowden said to Stacy. 
on his afterthought at, coming out of halftime. We have been behind. We've at been time behind before. the last two ball games, and we come back and win them. Second down and a long three. Thomas now in an eye backfield behind Ponder, but Ponder is hit. Down he goes. Cedric Griffin. Michael Johnson. <laughs> Grace, this is one of those deals where you're the quarterback and somebody forgets to block the middle linebacker. Now the back was supposed to come up and block him, Jermaine Thomas, but he doesn't get there because Cedric Griffin was there too quick. It's a good call by Dave Womack, the defensive coordinator. Five sacks today by Georgia Tech. That's the most Florida State's given up in a single game all year. Third down and 11. Ponder in trouble again. Flags down. It's going to be a holding call probably, but he's got a man out there, and it's inter almost intercepted again by Mario Butler. Sanders, number 77, a true freshman, the right tackle for Florida State, was holding, and he was holding Derek Morgan, and he had to, otherwise Derek Morgan. Holding. 77 of the offense. That penalty is declined. Fourth down. And that's the way to do it. Fourth down. It would have been third and 21 as it is. It's fourth and 11. Yeah, you got to punt. You got to punt the ball away. Each team only one time out remaining. Florida State thinking things over, walking to the sideline. We welcome those of you who have been watching another game. We're in Atlanta. An ACC battle that has been up and down the field for Paul Johnson's Ramblin' Wreck and the Florida State Seminoles, who trail by three with 4.17 remaining. Graham Gano into punt. Georgia Tech may have fallen into the neutral zone. It still will be fourth down. Daryl Richard fell out of his stance. Both sides pointing at each other. Well, doesn't, doesn't mean much. It's only five yards. Dead ball foul, offside 95 of the defense in the neutral zone. That's a five-yard penalty and still fourth down. Reminder coming up in about four minutes, barring an overtime. Here the conclusion of our game. We'll select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevy will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Well, fourth down now and six. It's a nail-biter. The offense is coming back out. Florida State's going to try to go for it. They only got 10 seconds to get the ball snapped. Eight, seven. Ponder under center. Quick drop. The slant's been there all day, and he got it again. First down. Burt Reed on the catch. Holy commode. <laughs> <laughs> the drive stays alive. That might have been the last time Florida State would be able to touch it if they didn't get a first down, but they did. And they've got a first down at the Georgia Tech 46-yard line. Four just, minutes left. You don't even understand what, what, what Daryl Richard was even thinking about going offside. I mean, what are you doing? They're punting the ball. He's just a, stay there. He's the smartest guy on the team. He's the smartest guy in the stadium. Up until that play. First down, Florida State. Ponder. The deep outs. Trying to make a diving catch. Did he make it? Parker, yes, he did. And it's a pickup of 11 more. Let's check in with Stacy. Yeah, just a couple things, guys. Just for your information, Bobby Bowden made the call on that two-point play. I just received word from them. And Gano, according to team officials, says he can go 55 yards if need be today, guys. That means he's in field goal range right now to try to tie the game. But we still have 327. And the clock winding. Remember, Florida State's got just one timeout remaining. Okay, now you're thinking, all right, don't turn it over. I've got the three in my pocket. Let's see if we can get seven. They'll hand it off. Jermaine Thomas. Georgia Tech can't get him stopped until he gets to the 28-yard line. I like that kid. Our Pacific Life. The game summary of this one. It's hard to summarize everything that's happened. We've had so many big plays in the ball game. Jonathan Dwyer included. He had two touchdown runs today, 36 and 66 yard romp. That was early in the third quarter. But Devontae Richardson, not that many minutes ago, 
on that pass to Parker. And now Florida State with the interception has it back and driving into Georgia Tech territory. Thomas again. They can't bring him down until he's all the way to the 18-yard line. I like that young man. Getting his chance because Anton Smith's got a bad elbow and bad ribs. And the freshman out of Jacksonville has really ripped off some big runs today. Can you just believe that you play so well? I mean, I mean if you look at the score, defensively, Georgia Tech was playing so well. Offensively, they were going crazy when they had Nesbitt in the game. The quarterback, they lose him. Now they get back on defense and they make one dumb mistake. First down just inside the Georgia Tech 19. They come with a blitz. Thomas taking it left side. Thomas breaking tackles. He's got it first and goal. Cedric Holloway, number 42, led the way. I really like, you know, you talk about quarterbacks. There's something you wouldn't do, Grease. Ponder getting the block. Look at that block. <laughs> That's pretty good. Oh, yeah, it is. You talk about an 11-point lead in the fourth quarter, and is there a jinx on Georgia Tech playing Florida State? They've lost 12 straight to them. Yep. Smith back in there now. First and goal at the seven. And it's Smith just wrapping both hands around that football. Yeah. Got down to the four-yard line. Georgia Tech came into the ball game third in the nation in takeaways. They had 22 at the time. They've gotten two more here today. What they need now is a takeaway. They're going to need a miracle to not at least go to overtime, but Florida State's thinking about winning it right here. Hey, yeah, I don't think Florida State's sitting there thinking about, well, we, let's tie this thing up. That's what I just said, Paul. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. There, there's no way that they would ever do that. And they're, but they're letting the clock run down and hoping they can score the touchdown. Marcus Sims in the backfield. Gets the call. He fumbled. Georgia Tech trying to cover it. Who's got it? Georgia Tech does. They need a turnover. They got one. Oh, boy. Well, oh, that was helmet on the ball. Yeah, it's just Cooper Taylor, the freshman, put his helmet right on the ball, and Georgia Tech's got the football with 45 seconds left. You know what here is Reed gets this ball, but look what he did. He almost makes a mistake. He went to pick it up. Instead of falling on the ball, look at this. Watch, he's going to try to pick it up, and he loses the ball. Then, fortunately, the ball's hit right back into his hands, and he gets it. How about a true freshman safety making the play of the day? Yep. I mentioned earlier. Here's a call. After video review, the call on the field is confirmed. There is a fumble. Touchback, first down. Georgia Tech with the ball at the 20. That's how, that's how Georgia Tech has made their living. They're, they're, they're. There's the guy that made the play of the game. I mentioned his daddy, Jim Bob, was a quarterback here. No offense, Jim Bob. You probably never made a play as big as your kid just did. He's put his helmet right on the ball. Sims did not cover up the football. He was running through that line at the three-yard line like he was out in the middle of the field. Remember, Florida State has only one timeout left. Georgia Tech, if their freshman quarterback can take more than one snap, the hex is over. There's one knee. Let's take a look at our Best Buy playbook, and we'll bring in the Prophet Robert again. Well, earlier in the game, this is the dive. Look at the two defensive back, the one defensive back, the one linebacker. The defensive back comes this way at snap. The linebacker goes the other way, and they give it to the fullback 
Dreyer right up the middle. Dreyer goes 45, 50 yards from the touchdown. That's because the two defensive guys split and didn't hang in the middle. The last time Georgia Tech beat Florida State, I was wearing bell bottoms in college. <laughs> 1975. Wow. Bobby Biden has never lost to a Georgia Tech football team. I think you can tell by that sideline that 40 seconds from now there's going to be a little bit of bedlam at Grant Field and Bobby Dodd Stadium. This will put Georgia Tech back in the ACC title picture. It might take Florida State out of it. Today's Chevrolet players of the game, Jermaine Thomas, big career-high day for him. Jonathan Dwyer, likewise, for Georgia Tech. In recognition of their efforts, Chevy will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Georgia Tech is a knee away from an upset of the number 15 team in the country. It's November. It's November. That's all you have to say. And now Georgia Tech at 7-2 under their first-year head coach. Their first win over the Knolls in a long, long time. What a ball game we had in Atlanta, huh? Great ball game, huh? <laughs> Bobby just said great ball game one day. The standings in the ACC. They've been shuffled again. Like this, now it's Maryland, idle, on the top spot in the Atlantic. And lo and behold, thanks to Miami, Georgia Tech has taken over the Coastal. Who's going to get it to Tampa? <laughs> the month of November will tell us, won't it? For Bob Greasy, Paul McGuire, Stacey Dales, from Atlanta, Brad Nessler, good night.